Hello, I'm Patrick Valls from The Economist magazine, and it's a great uh, pleasure to be here at the uh, Investing for Impact conference. Um, and I'm delighted to welcome His Excellency Khalid al Balik, uh, Saudi Arabia's uh, Minister for Investment, who's here to talk both about the kingdom's uh, approach to investment and how socially responsible principles fit in with that. Uh, Minister, welcome and thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Patrick, and it's a pleasure to be with you and addressing your audience. Well, I wondered if I could start with a very broad question, which is uh, how socially responsible investing principles fit in with Saudi Arabia. Uh, you obviously have a very big petrochemicals industry, uh, including Saudi Aramco, which you used to chair. Uh, you have a very large global investment portfolio through your sovereign wealth funds and central bank reserves. And lastly, you have a big plan to attract investment at home to change uh, the economy domestically. So perhaps you could give us a quick tour of how socially responsible principles apply in those fields. Well, that is a broad question. <laughs> and. Uh... It will take some time to cover, but I will try to be uh, focused and brief. Uh, I would just say at the top that if you uh, examine Vision 2030 and look at what it aims to do as well as what it contains, so both in terms of trajectory and destination as well as the way to get there, it is all about uh, impact investing, it's about responsible investing at the economic sustainability, uh, ecological sustainability, and uh, social sust sustainability. And of course, in addition to that, uh, at the governance level, as the kingdom continues to improve its, um, its, its uh, ecosystem in terms of transparency, uh, and, uh, and disclosure of its economic uh, enterprises. Uh, you mentioned uh, oil and petrochemicals and energy. I'll tell you that the kingdom is as ambitious as anybody in terms of cleaning up the environment, uh, reducing the footprint of, uh, of our economic activities in general, not just energy and making sure that we have the most efficient, sustainable energy mix that, uh, that will be existing in a major uh, economy. And again, I go to the blueprint of Vision 2030. It brings in uh, renewables uh, at, at, at a scale uh, that, that is uh, quite ambitious and bold. Uh, His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince, has personally uh, committed to bring hundreds of uh, megawatt hours of uh, solar capacity. In addition, we're building wind farms. In addition, we have uh, announced some of the world's largest programs in uh, green hydrogen. We're bringing electrification of the fleet ultimately to the kingdom, but we're also looking seriously as part of our investment portfolio at electric batteries uh, as, as part of the solution uh, to, uh, to, to reduce uh, carbon emissions. Uh, and, and of course, you look at our water management and our environmental uh, strategy, we're one of the few countries that have the entire chain of environmental stewardship from having a national strategy to having a national law that was just enacted to, uh, to, to put that strategy into practice, to very detailed enforcement and implementation, to even providing incentives, including a specialized fund for, that is being managed by the Ministry of, uh, of Environment, uh, Water, and Agriculture. The same thing I mentioned in energy, I could speak volumes about what we're doing in water sustainability. The same thing in our sustainable farming strategies that, that we're, uh, we're uh, rolling on and moving forward. So 
I think the, the kingdom is the, probably the largest laboratory in the world where responsible uh, investing and responsible development is unfolding at a rapid pace and with very, with very uh, high ambitions. Could, could I just um, drill into to, to two things before I think we move on and talk about investment domestically, just because I think the audience will be keen to get your view. One was um, on Aramco itself uh, and, and the extent to which socially responsible investing poses a threat. Uh, if you look at the super majors like Shell and BP, they're obviously in the middle of, of a, a transition away from uh, fossil fuels. Um, how should we think about Aramco in that context? Well, when it comes to oil and gas, Aramco mirrors the kingdom because they essentially have an exclusive uh, access to the kingdom's uh, resources. The concession is, uh, is, is exclusive to Aramco that the government has granted. Uh, and therefore, the company strategy is a reflection of the nation's uh, strategy when it comes to sustainability, when it comes to investing, and when it comes to the energy transition that is already uh, underway. I think what differentiates the Kingdom and Aramco on the one hand from some of the companies you mentioned is the fact that we have uh, an abundance of resources at our disposal. Uh, and those resources are going to be extremely crucial and critical over the next few decades to keep the global development uh, going that has started early in the past century and has powered uh, the global uh, economy uh, through 100 years of fantastic development, bringing billions of people out of poverty, making globalization a reality, uh, fighting poverty and, and disease and, and uh, and, and enabling uh, all of that. Uh, we don't foresee that coming to a cliff type of decline. But decline it will, once it reaches its peaks, which I don't know when, but uh, for sure, fossil fuel utilizations will peak and then uh, starts uh, a slow decline. Some companies will do that transition to those alternative complementary um, fuels faster than others, and some of it is because they don't have access to the resources I just described. Aramco, I believe, has about 264, 265 billion barrels, which, will, which we, we look at as an obligation to make available to the rest of the world. The other point when it comes to Saudi oil is that it's the cleanest, least environmentally harmful oil you will find anywhere on the planet. Uh, the flaring that takes place uh, at Aramco um, on, while, while they're producing oil is second to none. And this has been researched by independent parties and published. Same thing with, with, uh, with, uh, with, with uh, methane emissions that many oil fields, unfortunately, allow to emit uh, in the atmosphere and it has a harmful impact as a greenhouse gas of, uh, of, of, of uh, impact. Uh, in both of these cases, the kingdom uh, has next to nothing, or at least we're, we're, we're one of the lowest, if not, if not the lowest. Overall, our carbon intensity as a result of all of this and the efficiency and the scale with which Aramco operates makes, makes our carbon intensity of producing the hydrocarbons very, very low. In addition, Saudi crudes are light uh, relatively and therefore take less energy to refine once they make it to markets. So I believe, uh, although we're getting ready to a world where, where oil intensity will be much lower, I believe every drop of Saudi oil will be in demand uh, as we go forward. And it's a responsibility on us as a nation to put the policy in place and to encourage Aramco to continue to produce it responsibly. 
But in the meantime, we have to also embrace the energy transition, embrace a lower carbon future, embrace the circular carbon economy, which was uh, adopted as a theme of the kingdom's G20 presidency in 2020, which includes uh, all of the elements of uh, recycling, reusing, reducing, uh, as you know, as as we as we uh, uh, manage energy and carbon uh, in, in a resource-constrained environment. So, so let's turn to, to the the picture domestically, um, and, and your uh, running, uh, I believe, a, a new ministry um, that, that's looking specifically in investment and. Could you tell us a bit about the the trends over the last few years in terms of, of inbound uh, investment into Saudi Arabia, foreign direct investment, and and also uh, what you see happening this year? Um, I think global cross-border foreign direct investment, so investment by big companies, basically, is, is expected to halt. So tell us what you're seeing from your your perch. Well, I think I think we have done well in. A, in, in investing in Saudi Arabia, and the result is is, is the comp competitiveness of many of our sectors in the economy. We spoke at length about oil and gas and petrochemical. Uh, that has been the combination of national champions uh, in the kingdom, uh, companies like Saudi Aramco and uh, uh, and Sabic and Tasni and uh, Sipkem and others that have been active. But we've also been able to attract major uh, international uh, multinational companies uh, such as uh, ExxonMobil, Shell, uh, Dow, uh, Total, all of these are major players and they have chosen to come to Saudi Arabia because they've seen uh, the, the attractive investment uh, environment in terms of risk returns and, and the regulatory system. The economy, uh, as, as you alluded to, has been focused on hydrocarbons, so we have not paid enough attention in the past few decades on growing our productive capacity in other sectors, with the exception, perhaps, of aluminum uh, and mining. And again, Ma'adin, out of nothing, in, uh, in about a decade, has become a global player in both phosphate fertilizers and, uh, and aluminum uh, integrated aluminum manufacturing from the mine all the way to rolling mills for uh, for aluminum. And they've attracted companies like Mosaic uh, and and uh, and others uh, to uh, to invest Barrick Gold uh, and Alcoa in the aluminum. So these are global uh, you know, best-in-class companies in, in, in these businesses that have chosen the kingdom over other locations and have done well over the last uh, decade. In the next phase of our development, Patrick, we're going to expand the portfolio of investment opportunities. Uh, so value chains will go from primary industries like oil, petrochemicals, aluminum, fertilizers and, and, and so on into secondary industries and tertiary industries. And we will be moving into advanced manufacturing and advanced materials using nanotechnologies and, and, and know-how that, that new investors have, but also know-how that's developed here through very ambitious research and development programs underway to uh, allow us to use global resources better, including kingdom resources. This will uh, uh, extend the life cycle of materials and reduce, uh, reduce their wastage, but it will also uh, add to the sustainability of, uh, of the planet. Uh, we will be moving into, uh, into areas like tourism, uh, culture, uh, sports, and entertainment as we open these sectors for investment. Uh, and make the kingdom uh, a more uh, uh, inviting place for visitors, but also uh, a more attractive place for, for our own people to live and enjoy and prosper and produce and become good uh, global, uh, global citizens. 
And we're going to do this with ecology and sustainability first in, uh, in mind. Uh, so ecotourism is a centerpiece of our tourism uh, strategy. The Red Sea Project, for example, which is going to develop maybe 50 islands, 6,000 keys of hotels. It's going to run entirely, and I mean entirely, on renewables. It will have close to uh, 900 megawatts of batteries to allow it to run uh, 24 hours a day on a combination of wind and photovoltaic uh, power generated within, within uh, the site. It's going to be one of the few sites around the world that is accredited as a, as a dark sky location where you will not only enjoy the fantastic Red Sea environment with the corals and the islands and the beaches and, and, and the cl crystal clear water, but at night you will, you will be able to view the stars and the galaxies with, uh, with, with, complete, uh, with complete clarity while preserving energy and preserving the environment and, and avoiding uh, emissions. Uh, NEOM uh, is going to be uh, you know, a, a, a zone that is larger than many countries, but it's going to be also running entirely uh, on, on, uh, on, on uh, renewables. It's going to be running with, uh, with zero wastage of water. It's going to be, uh, it's going to have the most modern uh, and, and efficient mobility systems that will be very, uh, very, very sensitive to uh, protecting the environment. Uh, and it will be really defining the future in terms of technologies that, that also aims to, uh, to uh, protect our uh, precious planet. And, and ju ju just a quick po point of um, fact. So, so since the 2030 project has been launched, have you seen an uptick in uh, investment flows into the kingdom? Well, I think, I think the performance of Saudi Arabia is mirroring the performance in the rest of the world. FDI has declined since 2015 to 2019 by some 30, 40 percent. Uh, and it's declining again, according to uh, UNICTAD and OECD, the first half has seen a 50% decline in Saudi Arabia uh, and, and, and in the world in general. So we, yes, we are seeing um, you know, moderate maintenance of our FDI, but my focus uh, and my colleagues' focus in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is not on numbers and it's not on dollar figures alone, but it's on the quality and the impact these investments will bring. Uh, so Saudi Arabia is capital long, we have been for many, many decades. So we have not been as anxiously looking after uh, FDI as, as many other countries. Our capital markets, by the way, have enjoyed uh, huge upgrades in terms of their standing globally, in terms of transparency uh, and all of the global uh, indicators have attested to this and we've been integrated in the various um, uh, indices and, and as a result we've seen over the last five, five years significant inflows of portfolio investing in, in, uh, in our Tadawal market and we'll see more as more companies get listed within, within our capital markets and as the ones who are currently listed who will undertake more work probably go to the market and raise additional funds. So, so I think the future is, is where I'm focused. We're going to be drawing on, on, on quality and on capital from uh, sources within the kingdom, and there are plenty of them, both private and public, uh, as well as our partners around the world. What, one of the big difficulties with um, uh, sustainable investment is is both setting up a system to measure the results that's one and the other is a connected but uh changing incentives um in terms of of the people running projects the people allocating capital 
How are you measuring the social impact of investment flows and projects overall? And what are you doing to to change incentives so that behavior changes as well? Well, I can tell you, Patrick, that within within the Saudi government today, uh, we don't speak three sentences without mentioning the word KPI. Everything is being measured uh, from a performance in general, but that performance is cascaded down to the various categories, including uh, environmental sustainability, including social responsibility, including economic viability of every uh, every Saudi real we allocate and every Saudi real we invest. And we have detailed uh, tools that allow us to monitor and measure and manage and feedback uh, into our plans and adjust to ensure those KPIs give us the optimum, optimum results. So in terms of environment and sustainability, we are looking at everything from uh, coral reefs are, are, are measured constantly, uh, mangroves, uh, green cover on, uh, uh, on, on, on our soil, uh, onshore, you know, I mentioned our strategy for, for uh, the environment. We have a plan in the next few years to plant 10 million trees within the kingdom and 3 million mangrove uh, seedlings uh, on the shoreline. Imagine the amount of carbon uh, uptake they will take, offsetting the consumption that not only takes place in Saudi Arabia, uh, but around the world. The Red Sea project will actually increase uh, corals within within its territory, as well as has already applied to uh, to prevent to prevent uh, fishing, to restore fish stock within within the northern Red Sea uh, Red Sea environment. So these are some of the KPIs that are cascaded down to the project and to the entity level, but they all get aggregated on the social side. Women participation is being measured month to month. And the slope is like this. Ultimately, the aim is to have both genders participating equally uh, across uh, society, across the business community, and across government. And that's not a, a day far into the future, just by measuring by how much we have done uh, in the last two to three years, empowering the youth, where 70% of our population is young, and we see it as our number one obligation to make sure they are empowered with opportunities uh, as entrepreneurs, as, as uh, leaders, as uh, 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 scientists, technologists, engineers, doctors. So, so our entire uh, system of education, our healthcare system measures life expectancy and all of the type of uh, measures on, on morbidity and mortality, uh, and that's part of social investing. We're, we're trying to improve the quality of life for our people, for citizens of Saudi Arabia, but equally for the residents who choose to make Saudi Arabia their home. Minister, I think we're almost out of time, but I wondered if I could ask for a, a, a quick response. Which um, other countries have you looked at and, and which countries do you think are getting this right? You must have compared um, the kingdom to, to lots of other places? Well, first of all, let me, let me say that no, there is no perfect country. And I think we find, we find we're, we, I mentioned KPIs as being a constant in our, uh, in, in our uh, you know, discussions here, but uh, so is benchmarking. So we do a lot of benchmarking. Uh, I think in education, some of the Scandinavian countries have done well. So the last topic I talked about of improving our human resource systems, we've looked at Scandinavian countries. In the area of investing, we've looked at Korea and Singapore, and, and, and we, uh, we see them also in logistics. Singapore has been good, and the kingdom will become a global logistic hub. Uh, in technology and innovation, the U.S. has been, has been a the global, uh, you know, innovator of uh, of most significance. China is gaining there, and we have close relationship and uh, and China. And you will find within different areas in Saudi Arabia, uh, 
uh, an attempt not to replicate, not to copy, but to adapt these best practices and add to them and create uh, centers of excellence in Saudi Arabia that others will be looking to, uh, to, to replicate in their own countries, I hope, uh, in the future. Minister, we're exactly out of time. Um, uh, thank you so much for, for sharing your thoughts on that and, and the ambitious agenda you've got uh, over the next decade in, in Saudi. Um, it's been a pleasure to have you, and thank you to the audience very much also. Thank you very much, Patrick.